Good evening, everyone. We welcome you to an evening to pay tribute to those who lived through the partition. We are honored to have you with us today. The partition of the subcontinent in 1947 resulted in the largest migration in human history. Hundreds of thousands of people lost their lives and millions were forced to leave their homes. As people began life in a new nation, they threw themselves into nation building. The wounds and trauma of the partition were suffered in silence, often not talked about for many years, even decades. However, their experience of the partition affected the decisions they made and their life journey. It is their stories that the Partition Museum showcases. Malika Aluwalia, CEO and curator of the Partition Museum, was deeply moved by the stories that she came across while working on the museum. She has collected 21 inspirational stories of people who lived through the partition, endured the migration, the camps, and the struggle of rebuilding their lives to become leaders in various fields, including politics, art, literature, sports, and business. Thank you, Ganeev, and thank you all for being here. We'll have a more detailed discussion on the book. Uh, so I just wanted to say, to start with, the, that um, when we started this museum uh, three years ago, it was really a community-led effort, and we've called it since then a people's museum, because the idea was really that it should tell people's stories. So a big part of that was collecting oral histories, and when we started to do that, um, I think I and the rest of the team, if I can speak for them, knew that we would hear a lot of very difficult stories, stories of violence, stories of difficult migrations, stories of people um, fearing attack, being without food for days. But what I hadn't expected was the number of stories we heard about humanity and kindness, and that's something that's reflected in the museum. And what I wasn't expecting was to uh, be so starkly um, thrown by the resilience of that generation. And uh, that's, of course, something that I should have been expecting, because we all know that uh, where we are today, where this country is today, is largely due to the fact that that generation um, rolled up their socks and sleeves and said that they were going to provide their children and grandchildren, like me, a better future. So this book is really a tribute, in a sense, to that generation. Uh, we'll talk about it more later, but uh, we, we've got a short video here with some of the excerpts uh, from uh, the oral history interviews that we did that went into the making of the book. <coughs> of different forms today. All of them have made their mark in the literary and art world and need no introduction. However, perhaps what is less known is that each of them lived through the partition which has left its mark on their life and their works. I now request Ms. Ajit Kaur, Ms. Anjoli Ila Menon, Mr. Krishan Khanna and Mr. Satish Gujral to please come on stage to launch Malika Aluwalia's book Divided by Partition, United by Resilience, 21 inspirational stories from 1947, and to join us for a discussion. Ajit Kaur was born in Lahore in 1934. She is an acclaimed Punjabi poet and writer. In 1985, she received the Sahitya Academy Award for her autobiography, Khana Abdosh, and has also received the Padmashri and the Punjabi Sahitya Sabha Award. एक वर्ड इस्तेमाल करती हैं अपने टेस्टिमनी में चुम्बल्ड उर्दू और हिंदी में हमें वैशाख पागलपन ये लव सुनाई जाए तो वो वैशाख वो रोला तो आके चला गया उसकी जगह अब क्या है उस वक्त यही कहते थे रोले हैं वे ले हैं वे आती जब तो रोले पे स्थानों तो पलाना पड़ता है मारिया भी आती जब तो रोले पे स 
ਸਾਡੇ ਘਰ ਘਰ ਖੁਸ ਗਏ ਤਾਂ ਰੋਲਾ ਇਜ਼ ਵਾਸ ਅ ਮੈਟਾਫਰ ਵਿਚ ਵਾਸ ਯੂਜ਼ ਫॉर ਪਾਰਟੀਸ਼ਨ ਮੰਥਸ ਪ੍ਰੀਸੀਡਿੰਗ ਪਾਰਟੀਸ਼ਨ ਐਂਡ ਦਾ ਮੰਥਸ ਵਿਚ ਵਾਸ ਕੇਮ ਆਫਟਰ ਪਾਰਟੀਸ਼ਨ ਥੋਸ ਆਰ ਦਾ ਟਾਈਮਸ ਆਫ ਰੋਲਾਸ ਬਟ ਟੂਡੇ ਆਈ ਕੈਨ ਫਾਈਂਡ ਮਾਈਸੈਲਫ ਟੂ ਦਾ ਟੌਪਿਕ ਵਿਚ ਇਜ਼ ਰੀਕਨਸਿਡਰੇਸ਼ਨ what have we done how many steps have we walked for reconciliation i started thinking about reconciliation way back in 1985 and i thought all that we hear about our neighbor pakistan is uh, so many people have been killed on the line of control so many infiltrators have come back to india to create trouble why don't we collect the creative fraternity to come together and raise a voice for peace and tranquility and reconciliation so i started knocking at every door for visa for pakistani writers till then for 40 years after partition no writer had ever come to india as a writer if for example sam came once he came on the pretext that his grandfather had died and a matti ki moot mujhe dalni hai qabar pe to usko visa mila tha aise koi soft story suna ke visa milta tha not as dignified writers so for 2 years i fought my battle single handed and you know how difficult it is to fight a battle with the government because all the babus are not as sensitive as we fools are eventually i got permission for 10 visas of pakistani writers in 1987 and the first ever Indo Pakistani Writers Conference was held in Delhi on in September 1987 three years after partition and then we never looked back so people traveled all the way from Hyderabad from Lucknow from Punjab and I had booked it because I had hardly any money so i had booked a guest house of jawaharlal nehru university which was opposite tirveni i don't know whether it is still there and the cost was 20 rupees per room so i made two writers sleep in the same room so every writer cost me 10 rupees <laughs> and we used to get our food from the two cup daba from the jolly market and i had this uh, conference in the tirveni the lady had 450 seats so i thought there are enough no there were five 6000 people thronging to that auditorium <laughs> and the owner sundari shrinidharani complained to me day and night that i am spoiling her carpets <laughs> i said sundari what is happening today has never happened before and it will never happen again in your tiny little auditorium <laughs> so please please uh, take pity on me yeah. and bear with me <laughs> so that was the beginning of my uh, struggle for reconciliation a month after that gulam ali the singer was invited by pakistan embassy in october 1987 and the embassy had sent me also an invite to come and uh, listen to him but when the uh, officials of pakistan embassy met him at the airport he said who is this ajit kaur i want to meet her first only then i will go to the embassy so they knew me because of this uh, indo pakistan right to conference so they brought him to my home in dibba and gulamali touched my feet though we were of the same age <laughs> he touched my feet and said you have broken to see sade roe de darwaze tode ne jaise si right jaise bas 
Anjoli Ila Menon was born in 1940 in Burnpur, Asansol in Bengal. She is a known name in the art world and has received the Padma Shri from the Government of India and the Chevalier Don Lotre de Art et de Lettres from the Government of France in recognition of her work. Anjoli Ila Menon is a trustee of the Arts and Cultural Heritage Trust and her advice and support since the beginning has been instrumental in the museum's work. All these years that have passed, I have always been quite amazed at the general amnesia, it was a sort of mass amnesia, uh, where did we all, and did that whole generation, was it so terrible that the only way they could live and live on was to forget, was to bury those 
terrible, I mean, there were terrible moments, terrible losses, uh, families separated. Um, my father uh, came in a convoy, with, uh, a military convoy, back to Delhi. And uh, on the way, it took him, we didn't know when he was coming, there were no phones in those days, but he and another physician friend, Major Basu, uh, they operated on hundreds of people just lying on the roads with stab wounds. They had to leave them there. And finally, when they ran out of um, anesthetic, they had to use whiskey from the canteen truck uh, to first anesthetize the patients and then to pour the whiskey over their wounds as an antiseptic. So he really, I mean, we, we could only think of the suffering that people had through his eyes and through his stories. But he was virtually traumatized for life uh, with the experience he had when he said that the jhelum ran red with blood. It was a generation of very, very brave people who came here with nothing and really have, have settled down in Delhi, uh, running big businesses, have joined the armed forces, um, and I congratulate that whole generation. Krishan Khanna was born in 1925 in Lyapur, now known as Faisalabad, in now Pakistan. He is one of the leading artists in India and has received the Lalit Kala Ratna, the Padam Shri, and the Padma Bhushan. What the partition did to people and to us, we were fighting actually for our lives in a sense. And there was no time for art and all of this, let me tell you, because art does not, is not done in the heat of the moment. And particularly painting, I mean, maybe writing comes out, but painting means the establishment, getting paint, and there are techniques which are involved, which are very kind of cerebral and other things, and you really don't have time for all that when you're wanting to fight against, to actually re-establish yourself uh, wherever you are. And you didn't know where you were going to be, because I, I was working in a, in a large printing press in Lahore, and we were told, that's another story, but it's a long one, but I won't go into that, but we, we were given the indication that you better quit my father, who was then in the education department, and he was told, uh, you better leave tomorrow morning. No, but did your partition paintings happen during your bank year? No, it happened. Now, you see, the funny thing is that it, at, the, that, at that time, there was no painting at all. The I partition did. actually was, to swallow that pill takes a long time. Yeah. And I'm not so sure that, that, that the experience, that particular experience has completely worn off even now. Because it comes down, it, it comes down in many, many ways. But are the memories just as sharp? You see, the memory of that, and then the history of partition, that the partition in this country has been a long-standing affair. Yeah. The Mahabharat is the biggest partition ever. Satish Gujral was born in 1925 in Jhelum, now in Pakistan. He is one of the most eminent painters, sculptors, and muralists in India. He was awarded the Padma Vibhushan in 1999 and fated as the Indian of the Year in 2014 by NDTV. We are particularly grateful to Krishan Khanna and Satish Gujral, who have been huge supporters of the Partition Museum since the very beginning and have shared limited edition digital prints of their works, which are on display in the museum. Some of us here are aware of the way Partition has informed uh, Satish Ji's work, but can you elaborate a little on that? And it has not been decided which side now will go and everyone in our after the other which side you give now will fall. Incidentally, the news came that on 13th August, Nehru was coming to Laur. We waited for I I can remember Nehru. Nehru came down from the car with a lady mount button. The lady was wearing a red cigar. In those days, every two people who met in house asked each other 
Wie die Wehen, wie Zeichen, Laube und Fahne. Die Seen, Quatschen, Geben von meinem Vater. Mein Vater hat es gewonnen, die Vögel da liegen, wie Zeichen, Laube und Wehen. Und die Seen, Herr Fürste, die sind noch die Erde gegangen. Und mein Vater ist schuldig. Ich sage, dann hat ich das so. Das ist das Mahnige. Ah, ich habe die Tage vor dem Tag, wenn sie gar zu dir fahren, und ich fress die Brennwürste auf Pakistan. Und ich bin gut, er war angegriffen, dass ein Haus zu Ruhe zu Pakistan. Ich war nicht schade. Was mein Lieder zu Pakistan ist, sie haben auch gleich die, und ich habe die Chance, to paint Nairus portrait and used to go to his house every morning when he and me is sitting. My brother also used to go in me. One day my brother asked Padaji, you gave Rahul to Pakistan, what you gave us? In the in return, and then this year we got it is put on hold. Now we now we had you will hold the name of a transport, and then this year you will learn in time to come. Ajit Kaur and her daughter Aparna Kaur have also been very supportive, and one of Aparna Kaur's original works is also on display at the Partition Museum. I would also like to request our moderator today, writer and historian, Ms. Rakshanda Jale, to please come on stage for releasing the book. She has published more than 15 books and over 50 academic papers and essays, including a number of works on the Partition. She has translated Gulzar's writings on the Partition, and last year, she translated and published Krishan Chandra's novel, Gaddar. Uh, my life might have been affected, uh, perhaps your parents as well. How does a very young person come to be the CEO of the Partition Museum, a very hands-on curator? How, what, what, what drew you to write this book? So, uh, as you said, Rakshanda, I do come from a Partition family. In fact, three of my four grandparents were affected by the Partition, and I grew up with them. So these were stories that I heard growing up. And... Um, uh, so, so in a sense, that uh, idea of loss of a home left behind, I think, was something that I had heard. And because I, I still uh, live with them, I could see that their uh, friends were passing away. And that became a very stark reality um, a, a few years ago, which is what prompted, I think, finally, uh, this idea of the museum to, to come up in a very urgent way. Um, and for me, it was a very personal thing, wanting to tell the stories of uh, my grandparents and people like them. And so that was always very clear, I think, for those of us who were pulling together the museum, that it had to be a people's museum. And that's really what uh, we were trying to do. We weren't trying to make a museum about nation states. We were trying to make a museum about very personal histories and what it meant at that individual uh, level.